Local news about local people. This is Newslink Indiana. Hello and thanks for joining us at NewslinkIndiana.com for Friday, February 24th. I'm Jason Quick. We're a day away from Muncie's biggest fundraiser of the year. Newslink Indiana's Laura Warfield has the preview. When Mardi Gras takes over downtown Muncie this weekend, a few things are guaranteed. Guys with saxophones and drums and freak shows and belly dancers and just all kinds of, it's a zoo. <laughs> Ticket sales are up and local businesses are getting ready for tomorrow night's festivities, selling beads and preparing to bring the spirit of New Orleans to Muncie. A lot of them like to wait till they find out what the weather's going to be like for it, but then they start hitting us right around two to three days before, so yeah, it's gets a little crazy. But the festival that drew 11,000 participants last year is gaining national attention. A local church and 85 community members say they'll protest the event, which they claim brings nudity and drunkenness to the city. Event planners seem to welcome that attention. Muncie Grad and, and being down here for the party that one night, you really can make that any kind of experience that you want. Now, if you still need tickets, they're available at locations around Muncie, like Priscilla's across the street or here at Party Wizards. And while you're here, you might want to pick up an outfit. And if you're 21, event planners say it's a night you can't miss. If you are 21, it's worth, worth uh, the experience uh, to say that you were at Muncie Mardi Gras. It's on national news. You'll get to go, I was there. <laughs> and for thousands of people, that will likely be reason enough. In Muncie, Laura Warfield, Newslink, Indiana. The celebration begins at 6 on Walnut Street and runs until 3 in the morning. A downtown Marion building may soon be demolished. The city had plans to tear down a vacant building at Washington and 3rd Street. The owners promised to renovate and have 10 days to show improvement on the exterior. The owners would then have 6 months for the interior. I just want something done. It's a, it's a nuisance. It's an eyesore. It's a... It's a something that's been there for many, many years. The renovation will cost an estimated $300,000. Yorktown officials say res residents of Westbrook and Kamak had plenty of notice on their annexation into the town, but Muncie's mayor says there was an absence of detail on Yorktown's part. A Yorktown councilman says the town provided the details and that anyone caught off guard did not inform themselves. Kamak resident Tracy Conway is neutral on the issue because the town is already in the Yorktown School District. Paying taxes for a Muncie residence and not having the, the benefits of being a Muncie resident because we're rural, maybe, you know, if I had to decide one way or the other, York, Yorktown would be a better way to go. Conway says most Muncie residents already considered the annexed area part of Yorktown. A local country store is blossoming into daily therapy for the owners. Newslink Indiana's Melissa Delahanty tells you how. Imported roses and candles at the heart of a small country store, helping two guests and florists live their dream in a time of recovery. Well, this will give me something to do when I feel like it due to my uh, disability. Surviving a tragic car accident, Broyles decided to open the country apple with the help of her cousin, Rob Jordan. Recently diagnosed with cancer, Jordan sees this opportunity as a good distraction and a way to practice his talents. I needed something therapy, something to keep my mind working. They say that, you know, if you sit down, you'll just wither away. And the doctors told me I had to get up and do something instead of, you know, sitting there and just thinking about dwelling on what your problems are. Pushing the business forward, the owners are pairing with Real Roses, a worldwide flower distributor. Importing flowers from all over the world, the country apple has roses like this one out of water for a month and a half and barely withering. Neither withering in flower nor in spirit. Royals and Jordan have new additions to attract their customers. We're just trying to take and expand and we're putting up new train systems in here at this moment to try to have a, another reason for people to come out and visit us. In Gaston, Melissa Delahanty, Newslink, Indiana. Marsh Supermarket's new direction will focus on fresh. The Indianapolis Star reports this plan could include smaller stores and perishable goods like bakery, meat and produce. The company currently owns Marsh, Low Bills, and Village Pantry stores. The company hopes the new plan will allow it to compare with larger stores like Walmart and Target. A local artist is hoping to capture an award at the Miniaturista Annual Art Show. 
News Inc. Indiana's Rachel Zib shows us what art really means. For some, nature is fresh air and relaxation. But for Carol Strock Wasson, nature is the light of her passion. Tell me what you feel when you paint. What kind of emotions go through you? Well, first of all, when I'm attracted to a paint a subject, I like the light. So my goal when I'm painting is to capture the light. Wasson's been painting for 20 years. Her husband is also an artist. He is more of a designer with the landscape and I paint the landscape, <laughs> so we make a pretty good team. Although Carol's artwork is found all over Indiana, one of her favorites, the Peony Fields, is featured here tonight at the Minnetrista Annual Art Show. Carol's biggest achievements include an award at the Arts for the Parks and hanging a painting in the Indiana State Museum. Part of the fun of plein air painting is you're outside, you're seeing things that you wouldn't normally see in photographs, you're able to pick up colors and things that you don't normally see. So that, that's the fun of outdoor painting. For Wasson, a picture is worth a thousand and one words. In Union City, Rachel's Dib, Newslink, Indiana. Carol's biggest achievements include an award at the Arts for the Parks and hanging a painting in the Indiana State Museum. And now Aaron Walker joins us now with a look at the forecast. And Aaron, we've had a couple of nice days in a row. We got Muncie Gras this weekend. What can we expect from the weather? Well, it's going to be pretty cool for Muncie Gras. We have had some beautiful sunny skies the last few days, and that will continue, but that's also going to allow it to get just a little bit colder at night, which is what we're going to see for Muncie Gras. We're taking a look at this weekend. It is going to get colder. We've seen a roller coaster temperature pattern, and that will continue. We're looking at a bit of a week work week warm up, however, a return to possibly 50 degrees, and you're not going to believe that after some of the lows we're going to expect this weekend. But once again, by next weekend, it's going to cool off again, and the big question is how cold it's going to be. But for tonight, 34 degrees for your low, it's pretty mild, and that's helped in part by those winds out of the southwest at 13 to 16 miles an hour. There will be some wind to speak of, and you'll notice that tomorrow, 35, not warming up too much throughout the day. 37 by noon, and by 7 p.m., 30 degrees, and it's going to drop quite quickly. Now, these sunny skies, they're helped in part by this high pressure that's out in the upper Great Plains. It's going to move through our area, kind of stick around Saturday. Now you can see we're sitting yeah, picking up a little bit of showers overnight tonight. We're not expecting anything too much. Could be pretty scattered if we see anything at all. High, uh, high pressure continuing throughout the early morning hours on Sunday, and that will continue for at least the next few days through the early part of the work week. However, high temperatures around the area, 38 in Marion and in Hartford City, 40 in Anderson, 41 in Richmond. They're the warm spot on the map. Cooling off tomorrow night quite quickly, 60 degrees for your low, 60 in Hartford City. Muncie, only 17 degrees. If you're going out for Muncie Gras, might want to bring a coat at least with you in the car so you have a chance to warm up when you're getting ready to go. Now your five-day forecast picking up on that warm-up I was alluding to earlier. 33 on Sunday, 36 by Monday and slowly through the work week, 39 on Tuesday, sunny skies continuing, 31 for your low, but by 50, or by Wednesday, 50 degrees rather, and partly sunny skies, 33 for a low. It's looking like it's gonna get even warmer on Friday before it cools off again quite big time by the weekend. So, looks like this pattern is gonna continue. So for those going to Muncie Gras, they might wanna bring a scarf to cover up some of those Mardi Gras beads. You might wanna do that, yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Rugby is typically considered a man's sport, but photojournalist Adam Sturm shows you why Ball State's women's rugby is just as intense as men's. It's very cold and very wet. Clear it, clear it, clear it! You can't see the lines on the pitch, so you don't know where you are, you don't know where out of bounds is. It happens every year. The first games of the season played out in the snow. Keep the ball in field, keep it in field! It takes a lot of heart, that's like, Heart and passion. Heart, passion, and a lot of work. One, two. Even though it's cold outside, these girls are still giving their all. And for these Ball State girls, there is no difference between men and women on the pitch. There's so many women's teams out there now. They're as much as the team as any guy's team is. They work as hard. Ten. They play as hard. They hit as hard. We like beat the crap out of each other on the field, but when we come together, all it's like we're all friends. Yeah, so our saying is enemies on the field, friends off the field. Friends that will stick together until the end. Is Rugnet! Is Rugnet! From the pitch, 
Adam Sturm, Newslink, Indiana. The men and women's rugby seasons are now underway. And those are the headlines for East Central Indiana for Friday, February 24th, 2006. Join us again Monday for more local news about local people right here at newslinkindiana.com.